start. Got okay, enough? We, got, we got the sound check. Okay. <laughs> um, my name is Ed Clendenin. We're at the 2007 annual reunion of the 376 Bombardment Group. It is September 9th. We're conducting interviews, and I am, and you are, your name? Vaughn Steele. And where, where were you born? In I was born in Pasco, Washington. When? Nin a, a, a March 9, 1920. 1920? Yes. Uh, where were you on December 7th, 1941? What were you doing? I was uh, a, a deputy sheriff for the Franklin County in Pasco. Okay. And were you, did you enlist or were you drafted? I was drafted. And when, about what time? What month, it, year? I, if I remember correctly, it was uh, May the 22nd or 3rd of 1942. 42. Yeah. And uh, were you drafted into the Army Air Corps? I was drafted into the Air Corps. Into the Air Corps. Yes. And uh, how did they decide that, did you want to be a pilot? Did they say you were well, going to be a pilot? I wanted to be a pilot, but actually after I was drafted, see, I was sent to Shepherd Field, Texas, and I went to a mechanic school. Okay. And then during that time, I took the examination for aviation cadet and passed. Passed? So that you went to aviation cadet school? Yes. I went, well, I was in the Southeast Air Force Training Command. And of course, I went to several schools. I went to start at Maxwell Field, Alabama. Went pre-flight, Douglas, Georgia, I was primary. Gunner Field in Montgomery, Alabama, was basic. Uh, Blythe, Arkansas, was advanced training. Okay. And therefore, then I was sent to B-24 transition back to Maxwell Field. So you did your B-24 training at Maxwell in, yeah. in Alabama. Yeah. Okay. And at that. At the, when you graduated then, then they said you are now a pilot? Well, see, uh, if I understand you correctly, uh, after we finished Maxwell Field, then I was sent to Salt Lake City to, for a crew assignment. For crew, okay. And then I was signed as a co-pilot on another crew. Okay. And we were sent to Pueblo, Colorado. Okay. Halfway through that training, we were transferred to Westover Field in Massachusetts, and I was, I was changed from co-pilot to the pilot on the crew that I went overseas with. So we, that was the, the co-pilot, the pilot on one crew became a co-pilot in my, by, by my position, and I became the pilot in his position. So you started off with the crew training in the co-pilot seat. I, yes, I started off yeah. And then when you went to Wendell, Westover in Massachusetts, you became the pilot of another crew. Yes. So you'd gone through training with a bunch of different guys, and now you were the pilot of a different bunch of guys. That's right. Okay. And it, it was a situation that I was I was a little concerned about because here these people, all young kids, fellas, you might say, had a little good friend that they lost and took me and I was, but I was accepted by a funny thing, everyone on the crew except one person. And for some reason this day I, I have never made contact with him, so so, uh, so I feel that's his problem, not mine. So of the nine guys on the crew, eight of them accepted you as the pilot, but one of them, for whatever reason, right. was, was not comfortable with you. And we had, a good, we had a very good crew. In fact, and um, add a little to it, the uh, instructors there at uh, Westover, they was going to send us to another um, well, for the training. But I think what happened was uh, one of the instructor, instructor pilots took that position, so we went, we went to war. <laughs> So now, did you ferry a plane over, or did you? We, we took a plane over, yes. You took a plane over, and when you left the United States, I assume as pilot, you know you were going to Italy, or did they tell you later on you were going to Italy? I have a little, little problem. When you, when you left the United States with your airplane, yes. did you go over to England? Did you no. go down to Africa? We took the southern route. Southern route. Yeah. And did you know you were going to Italy? Uh, uh, yes. After for so many hours out, out we took we read the instructions. I mean, we, we were going to go to Italy. Italy, yeah. And did you land? Where did you land? We landed at Manduria, and they sent us to the three seventy to the uh, to San Pancrazio. Okay. And I wound up in the five twelve squadron. And uh, the plane that you ferried over, you do you, you have we, any idea what happened? No, to it? no. We, we didn't fly anymore on it though. Did you did you name the airplane? No, we didn't. You didn't. You just took flew it over, landed, yeah. and that was the last you. Yeah. And that airplane, they're talking about B-24 being hard to fly. That airplane wouldn't even fly on autopilot. Wouldn't even fly on autopilot. Oh. Well, see, I, it was okay except up, and, up the elevation. It kept, so I, I cut it out and flew manually. Manually. That must have been tiring to fly over the ocean to 
<laughs> yeah. So, so you, when did you arrive at the 512? What, what month? You beg pardon? When did you arrive at the 512? I, dates again, I think it was, it was in early April, 1944, early April. yeah. Okay, and when was your first mission? Shortly. My first mission was the Swakatch Archery, Austria, with uh, Lieutenant Doogie as a pilot. I was a co-pilot on that You were the co-pilot. Did you fly with your crew, or would you fly with Doogie's crew? Yeah, the first mission for my crew was over Palesti the following day. This was on April the 24th, I'm pretty certain, over, okay. over Palesti. So you flew as the co-pilot with Doogie. You flew as a co-pilot with Doogie, and then flew your crew to Ploesti the next day? Yes. Okay. Did your crew, did your crew stand down while you were doing the co-pilot duties? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So your, so your crew's first mission was to Ploesti. The first mission for you and your crew as a group was to Ploesti. Well, that, my first mission is, yes. Okay. And did, you flew 50 missions? 50 missions. Okay. So I see, well, exactly, it was about 35 or 36 sorties, but we got double missions on some of those 50, okay, but 50 so, missions. I so you had roughly 35 sorties, but 50 missions. Right. And when did, did your crew pretty much fly as a group? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And when did you finish up? Well, see, uh, gee, I don't know. I flew, my, I flew my last mission, I think it was about July the 22nd or 3rd, uh, 1944. Okay. And he now see that, in other words, that's just, just, just about three months' time as I flew those missions. Yes. And I got sick on one of my missions, previous missions, and I was grounded for about 10 days. So we were pretty busy when we were flying. Okay. And did, did your crew pretty much finish up at the same time? Uh, more or less. I had one of the crew, but I don't remember exactly now, finish the same time I did. It was, uh, I think, one of the crewmen, I think, finished ahead of us. Okay. And poor Joe, my co-pilot, he had to wait for somebody else to finish with us. I see. <laughs> and then uh, did your crew return as a group or? No, just, just. Individuals? Just one, yes. So you returned to the United States after your 50th mission? Right. And then what did you do? See, I wound up, I wound up uh, back to Fort Worth, Texas, and then they sent me, and then I was sent to, uh, Bryan, Texas, to go through the instrument school. Okay. And then they kept me there as a as a instructor, which I was very unhappy about. But I was able to shuck that, get rid of that assignment, and we flew elite trainer instructors around different air, different airports, up Bryan and Lente was, and uh, that. So and it's somewhere sometime about early July, I had no intention of getting out of the service, but I met this guy on the street, his sergeant. And he told me that I could, I could, I could, get, I could get out of service. Okay, I'm one now that, that never volunteered for anything. Okay. And uh, what they assigned me, I accepted it, did the best I could. Yes. But, but when I had to volunteer something, I was a little bit skeptical about, see, in other words, something's going to happen in this minute. I'm, I said, so I thought, well, I used to be a civilian. Yeah, I'll take, I'll take the, this. So, so I got out fairly early. It was, yeah, it was, was this in 45? 40, it was 45. 45. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was sometime in July 45. And you went back to Pasco? Went back to Pasco. Okay. And entered civilian life. Yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah going on a little story. See, I, I purchased some property. Okay. And then I went to work on the railroad, Northern Pacific Railroad. Northern Pacific? And I worked there for uh, th almost 35 years. I retired as a locomotive engineer. Okay. All during this same time, I had this little grape farm that I took care of. Grape farm? Okay. And I worked that until... Fall of nineteen, uh, fall of two thousand and six. Okay. So I just all the way. I just recently went on full retirement. So you became both a farmer and a. I well, after quit the railroad, see, I had all my, all my time to do the farming. Yes. And that's about all I did. Okay. So you raised grapes. Raised grapes. Was that for wine or was it grapes for grapes? Uh, well, it's just grape juice. It was grape, grape, juice. grape juice and jelly. Yeah. Okay. So going back to your service, uh, the discuss. Discuss your missions and stuff. Uh, what was your most memorable mission that you can remember? Well, I, th I think my most memorable my mission was before I ever went overseas. Before? Okay, tell us about that. It was a, at Westover Field. We were to fly high altitude formation. Uh, overcast about 6,000 feet. So they decided we'll thin us up one at a time. In intervals, I don't quite remember. Where it was 10, 15 minutes intervals before. So I don't recall whether I was a second or a third. 
But as soon as we got up into the overcast, everything was dead, static. You couldn't, no, no radio communication whatsoever. We went flying at a 360 degrees, wind, winds out of the west at altitude was 70 miles an hour. Now we're only about 100 miles off, off of Boston, see where we were at Spring, we were at Springfield, but Puerto Springfield in Massachusetts. And the time that we took it to get up there was considerable. We got to come out of it at 28,000 feet. So I continued up to up to 30,000 feet, and then I finally seen this other airplane, and then I tried to catch him. No radio contact for some reason or another. I never, I couldn't catch him, so I so I assumed, well, there'll be no more, be no fly high altitude formation today, so we'll head for home. Now, take, and then I headed 180 degrees. So, so the you story, were flying north, and now you're flying south. Now I fly south. So the story is now it took me a little time to realize the wind velocity. I stepped out of the west. Where am I? I probably halfway to England. I spent in a way, in a way. So I found out I made contact with Westover Radio and then head, headed for home. Now that was about I would guess oh three thirty four o'clock in the afternoon. I got touched down at about ten thirty at night. Just barely made it down. We was held off for a little while by someone landing in an emergency. Now we made the permission to land. Of course, you mean your your target, your formation, landing format, your your long long range. So when I came on down the base leg, I couldn't see the airport. So I so I went around again. Well, the same thing happened a second time. I can't can, can, can see the runway because of the overcast. The, well, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I made a movement over and landed. Mm -hmm. And the uh, time we got down toward the parking step, I stuff was right on the ground. One of the crewmen didn't make it back. I think the, probably the one I figured probably was when I had seen. He didn't make, lost the whole crew. They figured that he went down in Lake Ontario. Lost the whole. See, the story was then that the one of the crewmen forgot to take his parachute with him, so they all went down together. Oh. Now that was that, that was that was, so was. I think about that a lot. I I wondered why now that I was able to get back right, at the same training this other guy did, but he didn't make it back. Somebody up there is taking care of me? I don't know. <laughs> the, the plane that you were describing that was ahead of you that you could not catch? You were describing his plane was ahead of you, but you could yeah, not I don't know whether he was the one that they lost gonna, or not. But I was going to ask, was he the one that went down? Yeah. Or you don't I, know. I assumed he was because I, I, I think he and I were the only one that got up there, I think. Okay. I think, I think what happened, they finally they, they, they quit it before we too many planes got up. So I, so I must, have been the only, must have been the second one up. If I, I kinda, so this mishap was on your training. But as far as, as far as the uh, missions, military concerned, there was there's a lot of them out there. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, well, pick. Tell me, how was Pulaski? Was it well as bad as everybody says it was? The our first mission was Pulaski. Yes. I think that was the second or third of one of the ones that of the target the high altitude formation. Uh huh. Okay. Now, when we approach that target, and look at that sky. Your the thing you feeling is, is how in the hell do you get through that? Black. Well, yeah, that's black. Well, you, you often you did, but uh, but you, know, you you got hit more often. Well, flying along there, seeing the uh, the lead plane on my flight, I already had a propeller feathered, and I'm hanging on there for dear life, and we got hit, and the plane rocked. We hit hard, uh -huh. and I glanced across the instrument panel. Everything was functioning, so I relaxed. Okay. For just a split second before I realized I could hit again. Nothing else happened. Got hit again a second time. We never got hit. Oh, okay. Never got hit. The only thing what happened was when we landed, we had a flat tire. And being all the experience of, <laughs> at that time so forth, what do you do? See, well, what I did, I didn't, I didn't touch the brake for for some reason or other. I I suppose by that time, see the nose wheel on a B twenty four it was pretty fragile so forth. You know? But I throttled. I eased the throttles on the left and opened them up on the on the right and opened them up on the left. And I did, we did not ground loop. And the way we headed for the side of the runway. And I finally never got it straightened out until we got off the runway. That I think that helped a little bit because in other words, I didn't block the runway then. But see, if I'd stayed on the runway, that might have been a little problem. But I thought that my first mission, and of course, it was pretty rough riding across that we was off the runway on that. It was pretty rough, but nothing happened. Everything was stayed together. And, Okay. So I think first mission you wonder what the rest of them are going to be. Okay. <laughs> uh, how many times did you go to Ploesti? How many times? How many missions did you fly to Ploesti? 
How many times did I? How many, how many different missions, how many different flights to Ploesti did you? Uh, abort. You no, no, no. Uh, how many, how many missions to Ploesti did you fly? Oh, I think, how many missions did I fly? To, to, to Ploesti. Oh, oh, five, I was over Ploesti five, five times. Five times. Okay, so of the 35 sorties, five of them were to Ploesti. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, did you go to Wiener Newstead or? Tell me some of the other targets that you went to. Some of the other targets you went to, besides Ploesti. Oh, well, see, we we a lot number of number of targets in in Romania, and uh, I think uh, I was over Munich once, and uh, I Wiener Neustadt. And that's funny thing. I didn't. They called they, they, that was a pretty bad target. Well, I, mean, I never made that. I was assigned to it once, but they were playing they, they tore, the weather for the bingo. Okay. But. Uh, uh, oh, bad targets. I, I, I can't read, can't remember, really. Did you go to France? Well, Toulon, France. I, we went that way to Toulon and uh, one of the other places. A uh, couple, places, two, couple two, places there in France we went, which were long missions. Because those were the sub pens. And right? we had a fuel problem. Fuel some problem. Of the, some of the, one mission to France came back, and on the, on the downwind lake, I lost an engine. Because I don't remember, I don't remember now the term that had some had a system that you could put move that, put that engine over and where, where it would get fuel from any tank. So I had the plot engineer put that engine on whatever it was the other but anyway, on the base leg we lost another one. I said put them all on. We had 25 gallon of fuel left. That was told me the next day that we had 25 gallon of fuel. All we had left was B24. That doesn't seem like a whole lot of fuel. Well, I tell you, we're, you're, we were we were out of fuel. Yeah, we were lucky. I don't remember, we see, we brought our, our uh, bomb back. Well, I, I can't remember now whether that was a mission we, where we brought the bomb back or not, but anyway. Uh, I've read that if you didn't drop your bombs, that you were allowed to drop them in the, either the Adriatic, or was that true? Well, or were see, you supposed to bring them back? See, one time I did drop them in the Adriatic because it was shortly after they had a plane that crash landed before trying to land with two engines with a load of bombs. And it wasn't too many t t days after that we had we lost an engine shortly after we got in formation, and so I did. I go out. I had three engines, but I only went out. I dropped the bombs in the Adriatic, where it landed. Was that okay with? Yeah, it's that. See, no one, no one complained over so I, I really didn't like to drop them, but I mean, it was, we, we had we lost one of our engine, and another guy he crash landed, so I figured, well, <laughs> I'm not gonna take a chance. <laughs> I'd rather drop the bombs than crash. I'd rather land. drop the bomb. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when you were, the time you were over there, there was the Yugoslav detachment. There were a group of Yugoslav airmen. They were assigned to the 512th. Yeah, tell it again. There were Yugoslav airmen assigned to the 512th when you were over there. Yugoslav the, airmen. Captain, oh, Captain yeah, I, 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 flew, I, I flew the Yugoslav, was, uh, I mean, quite a few times. Yeah. Did you? See, there, was, there was four Yugoslav crews to start with. Right. The time I got there, there was two. Okay. And uh, we did, we, we, we had, they were in our formation uh, a uh, lot. In fact, several times I, I, had a, I had a flight with the Yugoslav crews in my flight. Oh, okay. Were they just as, gung, as anxious to, to fly the missions as, as you guys were? Right. Okay. Right, yeah, I think so. I, you know, I, maybe more so, maybe. I don't know, but. No, okay. did, they, did you ever fly with, with the Yugo, on the Yugoslav plane? Did you ever fly with on the Yugoslav plane as a co-pilot? No. Did any of them ever fly with you? No. No? No. no. Okay. Because there have been members who did fly with them. They, yeah. So, okay. Um, you knew, this is a personal question, you knew my father? You knew my father? Yes. Yes, I knew your father, yes. Okay. In fact, I flew, I flew with him once because he was going to fly an airplane back to the States. Okay. We drove up to wherever that airplane was, and I, I flew back as his co-pilot. Oh, okay. And I flew in several, several of his flights. When he was, he was leading the flights, I flew with him several times. Okay. You, so you went up to Barry to go get the plane that he flew back? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. he, he wrote in his diary that that airplane was really bad. I mean, it was, seemed to be in deplorable. I'm just going to get <laughs> That, that airplane was really bad. The, the one airplane, he, the, the, the which one? The one that you flew with his father. No, no, no. I, I think it was just completely repaired. I think. Okay. So they could fly back to the states. I think that's what the reason. We went up and, and brought it back. To Did you go up to Fuji to go get it? 
I, I don't remember exactly where it was, or Fort yeah. or Barry. It was somewhere north of us anyway. So you were his co-pilot to bring it back. No, I never knew who flew with him. I knew he went up to go get it. No, yeah. I did, did, in in did. fact, he took my, my, my flight engineer, my navigator, flew back to state with him. Who was that? Uh, Richard Jackson. Richard Jackson, okay. Yeah, and I've never, seen, I've never seen Jackson since, so I don't know whatever happened to him. <laughs> I was going to ask you, did you ever maintain contact with your crew? Uh, yes, in fact, every member, of my, well, no, not every member, but I right now, see, I have a, the top tour gunner. I see him at the, at the reunion quite often. And who is that? Uh, uh, Lester Rollcamp. Okay. Yeah. Now, the other members, I, yes, I, I write to them quite a bit. We can contact, and my nose gunner, for a, a long time, I, was, I, I, I couldn't get, I never had contact, but I finally got contact with him, and surprisingly, and of course, when I, and I told him about the association and so forth, and he, he, he was very interested, but I didn't think he ever joined. Okay. But, but, uh, but sadly, he passed away this, earlier this year. But I see his name was on the, on the list, so somewhere or another during the time, he, he, uh, what I'm assuming happened, his health got bad with him, uh -huh. and, he, and he could not come to any of the reunions. But, but he did join the reunion. But he did join. In fact, even the one that won't talk to me also is a oh. member. He's also is a member. Oh, he is also a member. <laughs> yeah, okay. but he, he won't come either. But my, uh, my bombardier, uh, the, the nodhead, we, he, he seen me in South Carolina. Now, he, guy, this guy wrote me this in a letter, but he didn't, he didn't make contact with me because he's visiting, visiting a friend. I said, will you go forth? Anyway, anyway I, make, I, I, I had contact with him. Uh, letter and so forth. My, my co-pilot, he lived in El Bogoro, New Mexico, and I, I visited him one time. And uh, he passed, I guess he passed away. I don't hear from him anymore. I, well, think I've, I think we still have five members of our crew yet that are, that are still alive, as far as I know. Okay. Now, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you were a flight officer, correct? Yes. What's the difference between a flight officer and a, and a Second lieutenant. Well, the only thing is, a flight officer is a non-commissioned officer. I assumed. Okay. See, so anyway, we just, we had the same uniform, same pay, all little different stripes, so forth. But anyway, but yeah. You were a flight officer. I was a flight officer. I went over as a flight officer. With, did they make you a second? Did you ever get made yes, a second lieutenant? Yes. In fact, it, and what happened was, yes, I I get made second lieutenant, and when I finished my missions, I was still second lieutenant. Okay. John Snyder would not let me go home. Because he figured if I go home, I'll never get a raise in grade. So he kept me there till I made first. Then I then I left. Okay. Well, that was nice of John. That was uh, that was nice of him. Yeah. <laughs> now, when you arrived, Gillette was the squadron commander. Is that right? Harry Gillette was the squadron yeah, commander. Was, yes. And John Snyder replaced yeah. him. Mm -hmm. Did the two men be up? Was. Was Snyder, was Gillette, did the way he, Gillette handled the squadron different than the way Snyder handled the squadron? Uh, I couldn't see much difference. I mean, uh, it was pretty, uh, in fact, uh, most everybody liked both of them. But, okay. Yeah. Because I know Dad flew back yeah. with Gillette. Yeah. And I met Snyder, or he used to come Well, to well Gillette, I got to give Gillette credit for something, one thing. My, my tail gunner was an old man. By that, I mean Bob he Dixon, was, he was he was in the thirties. That's other guy. We were in our twenties, and and he seemed like he was having a problem. So I I went to Harry and I asked him to Colonel Gillette, send him home. So I said he's had it, and by golly, he did. Oh, really? He sent, he sent the guy home. And I thought that was great. Okay. Uh, when you were with your crew, did they refer to you as sir, or did they refer to you as Bond, or well, how see, did you address they, no, each they other? called me lieutenant. You lieutenant. know, that, that was one of the, it's Bob Mayer, he was a little concerned. I was a flight officer, what to call me. I said, oh, they call me man, my name, Bond. No, no. So they called me lieutenant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like the new, I was too fit or I was going to make it sooner or later, so that's what he told him. Okay. Because some guys say it was a, kind of an informal relationship among the crew, and some say that some... Yeah. were very sticklers for being called by their rank. Yeah, no, did yeah. you, when you weren't flying, did you, did you mingle with, when you weren't flying, did you mingle with the, uh, with the enlisted men or no, just the not, officers? No, not, not too much, not too much, no. Okay, so you, um, did you, what was life like? Did you go to um, San Pan very much when you weren't flying? It seemed like I didn't do much of anything when I wasn't flying. More or less, they stayed in my tent. Stayed in your tent and slept. Huh? Yeah, more or less, yeah. Okay. I think about that nowadays. Is why? Why didn't I go out and watch some guy take off in the morning and come and land? I didn't. I didn't. I don't know. Just 
Didn't want to. I just, no, I didn't. Did you go on R&R &R to like the Isle? Apparently a lot of people went to the Isle of Capri on R&R. &R. Did, was that? Well, you? see, uh, now, see uh, now going uh, to, uh, I had a chance to go to Rome. Oh, I, I didn't want to go to Rome. I didn't, I didn't go to Rome. Now, they almost made me go to Capri. I went to Capri, but I was almost, you're going, you're going to go, get, get out of here. <laughs> and so did. I was more or less kind of like a, still am, a more, a more of a stay home person. But. Okay. <laughs> well, they made the service. I wasn't going, I didn't go much. Now, did your, crew, did your crew go as a group when they sent you on to Capri? Did your crew go, did your crew go as a group when you went on R&R? &R? Or did they send you as individuals? No, it was more or less, I don't know. We did, we, well, it seemed like during, uh, during training, the, uh, the crew that I was with and the crew that I finally wound up with went together quite a bit. Oh, okay. So, so, so one thing about it, that particular part, of it, that we knew one another before I became their pilot. So it was something that anyway. Well, that brings it, going back to the, this crew that you were the co-pilot with before you got transferred, did they end up in the 376 also? No, no, no. I'm the, I'm the only one that I know of that wound up in the 376. Do you ever know what happened to them? No, I don't. In fact, I wrote a nice long letter to my former pilot, uh -huh. and he, he, another one didn't, wouldn't answer my letter. So, so you don't know where they so were? Well, they all, they all hated me, I guess. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I doubt that, but, so, but you don't yeah. know where they went to. Who, no, what was no. his name? They were up in, they, were, they, were, they, were, they, went, to, they went to Italy. Yeah. So then I, I assume they were up at, uh, up at Fogey or some, Fogey area someplace. Yeah. So they would have gone on the same southern route that you yeah, described earlier. Same, yeah, yeah. We, in fact, we all went together. All most all went to, I think it was about five or six crews of us that we came came over. Of course, one at a time at the same at the same time. So but we were at the different stations at the same time. So, so five but, crews flew, flew five, five, five planes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But I was the only one that went to the three seventy six. Okay. Uh, you were saying earlier about a lot of stories. Is there a story that you wanted to talk about that I didn't ask you? Well, there was a uh, there's several. So of course, so, so much happened. Not no, I don't know what uh, you know. Uh, get, we got shot up a lot. One time we got shot up the bad. I had nothing worked. The radio was not ready. In fact, we had to put the landing gear down manually. Uh huh. I think about that too. And uh, how did I how did I get the airplane stopped? But we got it stopped all right. But uh, I think one of the one of the worst missions I was on, I was leading, we, uh, Jared Joa, I think was the name of this target, someplace in a way. And in fact, I think your dad was on that, tar on that mission. So it was the they, airplanes came out of the sun. We no one seen them until they went through. They knocked down four airplanes. And that, they, they got my slot man, and uh, there, was a, there was another crew there, two co-pilots were flying on that last mission on a borrowed crew. They got shot down. Oh, was that Hillman? Hillman, Hillman and Harper, yeah, they, yeah. And they had Joe Simmons's crew, and they got shot. But we lost four airplanes on that one. In fact, I remember that plane because my dad was flying deputy. Yeah. You were in the next to him. Hillman was flying next to Dad. And you said Hillman went down. You were the only surviving plane in your echelon, and I think you pulled up next yeah. to Dad to complete yeah. the mission. But yes, what? they came out of the sun. I think Bratislava was a was a kind of a bad mission. In uh -huh. fact, uh, yeah, we said we were. It was, it was three sections, and I was flying tail end Charlie in the th on the third section. Uh huh. And in fact, our top turret gunner was lucky. He had a hole on each side of his head where a shell went through it on each side of his. And uh, that was that was. Uh, what else was there on that one? I guess that was it. And yeah, well, if we had fighter planes, well, so what happened on that one? I'm, I'm tailing Charlie. I got right up underneath the lead plane. I was, I, I, my, my nose of my of our airplane was right up underneath that tail gunner. And so I said, they weren't going to get us. <laughs> Did you, wh one of the objectives of the, of the Air Force was to try to eliminate the Luftwaffe fighters? W was there a, did you notice a decrease I, I, in the I really, number I don't of fighters? Know what, I don't know where, I really, I wouldn't have, I don't, I would never even thought about it, or you'd think about it. I don't know. It, it, it was, everything seemed to work pretty well, but okay. I didn't know if you had uh, noticed that the n number of fighters intercepting you were starting to fall off as well, you were flying your mission. Well, <clears throat> well, I think you, about it. You see, we had the P fifty one, that black pilots, the Tuskegee Airmen. Yeah, when they 
See, when we first got over there, well, we had P-38s and P-47s, I think. Well, they just covered us out in the target area. Okay. But the P-51s, they, they covered us all the way over and all the way back. Okay. So that made it, that, that was made it, yeah. When did the P-51s, when did the P-51 start accompanying you on your mission? Well, I think about when? When, I mean, rough, towards the end of your? Well, I think they probably, uh, you mean, the time of year you mean, or? Well, you said you started off at the, when you first started flying missions, the P-38s and the P-47s were providing escort, and then you were said that as soon as the P-51. Oh, it must have been about, I suppose about half, halfway through. About halfway through? I think so, yeah, yeah. And, uh, but the last, about the last 20, 20, 30 missions I flew, I think we had a... And did you know at the time that they were the Tuskegee Airmen? Well, the not really. No, really. I, I, really, I really never seen anything, really. In fact, I never hardly ever seen any airplane out there, but I got to a point with myself. But you found yeah. out afterwards that it but, was... Uh, oh, yeah, on that Bratislava mission, I'll get back to that again. Okay. Uh, see, the, the airplane, I think it was the one, the first airplane I flew, and, and we had a flat tire. Mm -hmm. uh, the pilot by the name of Drake. The first thing I noticed on this mission, a big ball of fire went by us. And God almighty, then I, as we went full gas a little, a little further, I seen the B-24, which was a Lieutenant Drake. He had he, that plane, they hit that, that plane hit him. Mm -hmm. And his wing was off, and, and he's on fire, and on, on the way down. And Drake then, his co-pilot was my bridge partner. And I don't, but I don't Your remember bridge his, name, partner? his name was, but in a way they lost the whole crew. And that was on Bradley's flight. I think, I think what happened, there were three of them planes, I see them go up, up around us on the lawn on our right, and then they come in towards us. I think what happened, they came in so, so right ahead on that plane, I think they, might, they must have shot the pilot. Must, must have, in a way, in a way the uh, lieutenant, what, I can't think of the name right now, in a way the, per, the person flying, that, uh, leading that, leading that, that, that uh, flight was, uh, uh, he was, he's, he's at the meeting right now, he's seen that, he's seen, he's seen, he's seen, he's seen him make contact. I think that was Carl Yarian. Yarian, I think. Yeah, Yarian, that was it, yeah. Because he asked me, he was trying to track down, because he saw Drake, he was right behind yeah. Drake. Yeah, and I was right behind him, but I, I didn't see the plane come together. I, I seen it after, after he got hit, I, I see it. We, 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 I, I seen that, yeah. Yes. So the, there was a mid-air between a German fighter and, yeah, and Drake. I, I, I know, I no doubt, I no doubt, I think the uh, repeat that the, the probably, he got, probably got, probably got a shot, and then he had no control, and anyway, he, I don't think he hit him on purpose, I don't think. I don't think it was made actually on purpose. I think it was, he was, no pilot, he was dead. Probably the German pilot was killed. Yeah, I think so. Huh, okay. And that was on the Bratislava mission? That was on the Bratislava mission. And the group got the presidential citation for that mission. Didn't the group get the presidential citation for that yeah, mission? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did, yeah. Okay. So you guys yeah. must have done whatever it was they yeah. were asking you to do. So the only, uh, I got another, another mission that I nasty, kind of a nasty one, is fuel problem. We were on Palesti, coming back from Palesti. I was, uh, I was, I had another pilot was instructor to escort this other plane home. I had a fuel problem. And Big Red, uh, it was explained Big Red. And I, I think, the, I, I think they were going to assign me that airplane. Anyway, anyway what happened was, we got information, and we had a fuel problem. So I just called this, this kind of broke away. I figured I can do better by myself than I can by flying formation over here. Okay. And so when we, we got over the sea, I had them throw everything out, like the aircraft, even threw the guns out. Mm -hmm. and, and consequently, what happened, we had 150 gallon of fuel left in the wing tank. That's all they told me. Never, they never criticized me or know nothing. Well, I know what happened. See, what happened, my flight engineer was very poor and paranoid on air in the fuel system. So we have fuel pumps to take care of that situation. Anyway, so he, when he transferred the fuel, he transferred it by time, so many gallons per minute. And this particular day, we circled the field about up to about 15,000 feet because we had a weather problem further on. So we have less pressure when he transfers the fuel, so he don't get all, he didn't get all the fuel transferred. Yes. And anyway, I so anyway, so when when, uh, when when we so they told me I had 150 gallon of fuel left in the wing tank. That's what I told him. Now, hoping maybe he realized why we had 150 gallon of fuel left. I mean, I was been I've been plenty of fuel. We made it home. See, but uh, I don't I don't know how much we had in the main tank, but we had 150 gallon of fuel left in the wing tank. And I think about that. You know, to me, I I I that's one thing that I I didn't get the DFC. I said I bet that's what cost me the DFC. But anyway. <laughs> 
I think about that quite a bit too. Huh. So did your flight engineer but, ever learn? But what happened? What happened to Big Red was that kind of saved me. Uh, of course, they couldn't use it for missions. Yeah. Uh, I, I, what the heck was the name? Burton, Dick Burton. Dave Burton. Flew that Dave. Dave. Burton. Dave flew that plane. He was going home to Naples and crashed it. Well, now which plane was this now? Yeah, he tried. He crashed Big Red. <laughs> the, the name of the plane was Big Red. Yeah, Big Red. Yeah, yeah. The big woman painted on the on the nose of it there. Oh, okay. Yeah. I had I, that's why that's why they called it. I don't know if he, people brought it over. I didn't. They, they I, didn't. The five twelfth got it so far. I was gonna say I had not heard of that. And you had heard? Well, I knew he had crashed a plane, but I never knew it was, had a name associated. Yeah, with Big it, Red. But it was yeah. called Big Red. I, I had a feeling they were going to give me that airplane to finish my mission with, but I didn't. <laughs> but Dave crashed. What up? Well, well, I, well, I, I fooled. I fouled up. See, by uh, not not having that. But, Engineer of mine transfer transfer all the fuel all the wing tanks. <laughs> Did you explain things to your flight engineer for the future? Well, uh, no, I didn't. You know, I, I just more or less told him what they told me. We had a 150 gallon fuel in the fuel tanks, and I was hoping that he'd realize why. But now I, I don't know whether, whether he ever did or not. I don't you don't know, know if he ever learned the lesson. No. Huh? <laughs> okay. Now I remember at the reunion in uh, Cincinnati a couple years ago that you had flown the Strawberry Bitch. I, I don't, I'm not getting your question quite. But I understood. I flew Strawberry Bitch. I think three times. I think three times. Three times. And that's something else. No, I mean, give me another little story. See, we were we were assigned one day to fly the Strawberry Bitch. Well, they we flown many times. The crew didn't like, was afraid of it. So I went to the colonel again and asked for another different airplane. And uh, I don't know if the guy realized we had a we had a I was I, it was the worst mission we ever had. We had a plane that I, I could, could hardly keep up. But we made it back. But anyway, when I, I one of my my last roll cap one time, I mentioned him. Said, "You, you remember that plane that you guys, you guys, you would? They, yeah, they came over to me, woke me up, and said they were they weren't going to fly the next day. They weren't going to fly." Well, I, I wish now I'd, I I hadn't done nothing because if they weren't going to fly, they 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 got court martialed somewhere. Sure. But, but they don't remember those things anyway. But uh, anyway, that, that was a bad mission. Anyway, and because, which mission was that? I, I don't I don't remember where it was at, and it was someplace there in Romania. It was, and it was quite a ways. And, and so you you were assigned to fly the Strawberry Bitch. You went to Gillette and said, "I need another airplane," and they that got airplane a, was worse than. They got an airplane from a different squadron someplace. Yeah. Okay, and that airplane was yeah, really Stra bad. Strawberry Bitch stayed home. Stayed home. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I flew that airplane. I, I think it was three times. I flew it. Yeah. Uh, of course, that see that was one of the Africa. Or the uh, North African, African plane. airplane, yeah. Uh, I remember when my dad first saw the Strawberry Bitch at the Dayton Air Force Museum, he was kind of surprised that, that his plane, or a plane he was sitting there. Did you ever, when, when did you know that the Strawberry Bitch, or when the, did you uh, find out was at Dayton? When did, you, when did you suddenly realize that a plane that you personally had flown was sitting at the Dayton Museum. Well, see, at that time we went to Dayton, we went out there, uh -huh. see, and uh, we knew the Strawberry Bitch was there, oh, you did, and okay. so, so I was I was wanting to get inside of it, and one of the one of the tenants around there, he done his effort to get me inside, be able to get, get me inside the airplane. So he went, he went up in the office even. In fact, the, uh, later on that day, he, he talked to some I think some general that was kind of more or less in charge of the of the day, uh, place there. So we went up there. We well, said, "What well, do you any good? Everything's boarded up. They said they've taken, they've taken everything out of, out of it." So I think I think I would I would have got a chance to got into it. I would like to got into it, but uh, but but everything was boarded up. So so no, no, no you couldn't. Well, nothing to see. Oh, okay. But, they, but the, the, the memories were there, right. of course, and they still remain. But when you see it today, do you think that it was? I remember guys commenting at the time in the 1940s when they first saw a B-24 how big it was, and then I've heard people yeah. say today how small yeah. it is. What when you saw it again, did you did you realize, gee, how small was that for ten guys to be flying in, yeah. or what was your thoughts? What what did you think when you saw the Strawberry Bitch after 30 well, years? Well, of course, of uh, it made, made me remember uh, about those times so far, you know, flying uh -huh. missions so far, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. but. Yeah, no, they they claimed that say B twenty four was a hard airplane to fly, you know, and uh, to me it really wasn't. But I had an opportunity to fly B twenty four one time. When when was that? Anyway, it was 
several years ago, they, it, they, they're making a tour, B-24 mm -hmm. and the B-17. And I gave those people $1,000 to take a little flight in the, B, in the B-24. Well, it so happened they had a little engine problem, and I got a chance to, in a way, to fly with it from Pasco to Walla Walla, about a 15-minute flight. Yeah. In a way, so it, it was, I, but I could not, I never got the feel of the airplane because I couldn't do no maneuver because the B-17 was fly formation with it. Okay. But in a way, you know, I, I, I was never so, so more disappointed in all, in all my life. When we landed, so I disappeared. I didn't want to be seen because I, I really didn't, I really never got to feel the airplane. Then I, and I got to thinking later on, well, how dumb can you, can you be? It's been 50 years since I flew on the airplane. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what did I expect? But, but anyway, so it, it, take more than, it would take more than 15 minutes to get the feel of the airplane back. I, but, anyway. but you were allowed, you, you, you managed to fly another one 50 years later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I figured I could land it and take it off like anybody else. Well, I, know, you know, I realized, no, you can't be, be so ignorant as that. So, so I felt a little better. <laughs> but I am aware that they tour with the B-24 and the B-17, and you can pay money to Well, to if, I'd had around, a if I'd had a chance to get out and fly around so far, see, a little bit of it, but I never, but I couldn't be so busy with the plane, sure. plane flying, flying formation. But it. they allowed you to sit up. Were you sitting in the pilot seat or the co-pilot yeah. seat? Yeah. Were you well, sitting? that's something else, too. They didn't put me in the, I see, I was sitting in the co-pilot seat, so that makes, it, it makes it a lot sure. different. Yeah. I assume flying the airplane is different depending on which seat you were flying. Yeah, yeah they're supposed to be a fly your position. Well, they, they didn't give you my position. They didn't give you your position. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that, that made a difference, yeah. Okay. Well, I think we're kind of running out of time. Is there any other story you would no, like to I think talk that's, about? No, I think I'd like to about cover them. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's been... I was lucky. I never made any crash landing and so forth, but everything else, you know. Well, what is it they say the best landing is one you walk away from? The, the best landing that I ever made in a B-24 was a crosswind landing. I like to tell this story. Okay, go ahead. See, in a way, we had a cross, we had a hell of a strong wind, crosswind. I, so when we were make, making the floats, I said, now, Adam, so, now how am I going to do this? You either come in there on one, one wheel or crab it. I said, I'm going to crab it. I crab it into the wind. And part way down, I told my co-pilot, I yelled at him, says, when I hit, told you to hit that left rudder, you hit that left rudder. And it was, it was perfect. The way things come out, just perfect. Just the precise time when you were come, just about ready to touch down, we, we hit it over and landed. Now, I was commended on that landing several times. The only, I made a mistake. I didn't say nothing. When they come in, I didn't say a word. I, I regret the fact that I didn't say, well, Joe helped me. And he did. I don't think I could have done it by myself. So you needed two. But you we, two we hit that rudder and pulled her over and made it just a beautiful landing. Yep. And I, I got the best landing I ever made. Did you uh, ask your co-pilot for if you were having you were flying the airplane and you came across a situation that was new or different, or did you ask your co-pilot for an opinion on what he would do? No, no, I never, no, I never so did. You, it was almost you doing instinctively no. what you thought. It seemed like I, I just, I, I just, I just. I just apparently was, I don't know why, I was able to do almost uh, okay. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Poor, poor, old, poor, poor, poor old Joe. He, he really wasn't a good pilot anyway. See, he so was he, not a good pilot. He, yeah, yeah, but, but he, yeah, but I yet, at one point, I got sick at one point. I really got sick, uh -huh. vomited everybody else. I, I don't remember, I don't think we dropped the bomb. Anyway, Joe flew the plane. So when come, you know, coming back for, uh, I, I landed it. But, uh, but, but, yeah, but in a way. So yeah. you got sick during the mission? Uh, yeah, and in fact, I went to the doctor after I got a doctor, with flight surgeon. He said I had a tack appendicitis. I still got him. But I, I, got, I, got, I got sick, sick of it. And, we, and then I was grounded about 10 days, you know, now with that, so. Did your crew fly while you were I, down? I didn't fly, I didn't fly, do no flying at all there for so. Did your crew fly while you were? No. In, no? no? They stood down no. with you? Oh, once in a while, one of them put, fell in for somebody else, but that would be all, no. They okay. all stayed on the ground. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time well, and your interview. Not, yeah. and your well, that stories. wasn't too bad. No, that, that, that worked out pretty well. <laughs> well, I'm glad. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't as painful as people say. So. Yeah.